The death of General Grievous at the hands of Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi seemed to signal the end of the Clone War and make the Republic victorious. But as soon as the Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker returned from his meeting with Chancellor Palpatine, the report from fellow council member Mace Windu was irrelevant. Supreme Chancellor Palpatine had turned out to be the Sith Lord they'd been looking for, and the Master of the Order organised an arrest for Palpatine with three other council members, but not Anakin. The Jedi Knight had other ideas, fearing for the life of his secret wife Senator Padme Amidala of Naboo, and decided to join Palpatine in the faint hope of gaining the knowledge to save her from imminent death, as the galaxy quickly turned against the Jedi. Obi-Wan was one of the few Jedi who were able to escape and reuniting with Senator Bail Organa of Alderaan and Jedi Grandmaster Yoda, they tried to apprehend the Sith. Failing to stop the rise of the Empire, the Jedi were forced to go into hiding, with Obi-Wan residing on his old Padawan's home planet of Tatooine, tasked with looking over Luke Skywalker and keeping him safe from the Emperor. But what if Obi-Wan never went into exile? What else would he have done to help the galaxy? As you are about to find out, the existence of a more active Obi-Wan could have altered the fate of those in the Empire and the Rebellion. Aboard the Sundered Heart, Obi-Wan Yoda and Bail Organa sat in the conference room, discussing what should be done with Padme and her children. Deciding to firstly fake the deaths of Luke and Leia, Yoda insisted that they needed to split the children to protect them from the Empire, until they were ready to be trained. Obi-Wan is unsure of Yoda's plans, fearing that the Empire would grow too powerful if they waited to train their children, and suggested they should begin the training of Luke. Yoda partially agreed, and allowing Obi-Wan to take Luke, Bail Organa took Leia to Alderaan. But the Jedi Master no intention of keeping Luke on Tatooine, and heading straight for the Outer Rim, the Jedi Master is surprised by the speed of the Empire's mobilisation, as it surrounded the planet of Mandalore. By using his knowledge of the planet, he weaved through the new defences to land beside the Royal Palace, where he is guided to the throne room by several night owls. Bo-Katan had taken her place on the throne, and dismissing her guards, the Jedi Master informed her that her planet would not be in peace, as the Empire had already found her. Igniting his blade, they could hear the sound of clone troopers dropping down from Republic gunships outside of the palace, and Bo-Katan's forces start to battle to maintain their territory. Obi-Wan still wanted to hide his identity, and entering his starfighter with Luke, he monitored the battle from above, using the force to manipulate the clone troopers, and shooting down any commanders of Clan Saxon, who had formed an allegiance with the Empire. Helping to fend off the Imperial forces, Obi-Wan knew that these clone troopers would not be their new army, and soon the Empire would return with a vengeance, so he left the planet until he was needed again. The Jedi Master was about to make a risky return to Coruscant, in the event the Sith had not pillaged the temple's extensive archives, when he received a transmission from the hooded Captain Rex. Obi-Wan is initially reluctant to accept the clone trooper, having just witnessed the destruction that they were inflicting on those opposing the Empire. But hearing about how he had removed his inhibitor chip, they met aboard Bail Organa's cruiser. Rex had already been working quietly for his own new rebellion, and the help of the Jedi Master was exactly what he required, but Obi-Wan tried to convince Rex that any remnants of the Republic had been completely destroyed, and he needed to join Bail Organa's ranks. Although initially hesitating, Rex realised that they shared the common goal of fighting the Empire, and accepting his new role, he set about using the information gained from the Martez sisters to recruit Clone Force 99. On their journey to the planet of Ord Mantell, Obi-Wan was growing fearful that the presence of Luke would soon be detected, and connecting with the Force as Yoda taught him, he could hear the faint voice of his master Qui-Gon. The deceased Jedi tells his Padawan that he cannot blame himself for the demise of Anakin, but he now must focus upon training Luke, as he would be able to restore balance to the Force. Landing in the heavily damaged Ord Mantell city, the Jedi Master could feel the danger in the air, and he could see the flags from a building controlled by the Black Sun fluttering in the distance. Nevertheless, Rex and Obi-Wan walk discreetly to Sid's parlour, where the clones are waiting for them. Subtly using the force to probe into their minds, he could feel the conflict within the clones, regarding the betrayal of Crosshair, and he questioned if he could retrieve the clone without endangering Luke. Clone Force 99 showed their reluctance, as they had seen Crosshair firing at them, 
and they didn't know the extent of the Empire's control over him. Nevertheless, Omega was adamant that they should not leave their brother behind. In following the clones in their Omicron class attack shuttle, Obi-Wan and Rex waited cautiously behind them when he sensed the darkness in the Force. Dwarfing their ships in sight was an enormous Imperial fleet, making the cloud cover planet even darker than before, and Obi-Wan knew that little time before they were all victims of the Empire. Despite the immensely powerful downpour that threatened to restrict all visibility, Echo safely guided them to one of the platforms, where the group split up, with Clone Force 99 taking the secret underground tunnel system, and Rex and Obi-Wan taking to the water. The former clone and the Jedi Master used grappling extensions, attached to ascension cables to swing under the platforms, and are the first to arrive at one of the many docking platforms. Hiding behind a shipment of weapons, Obi-Wan finds the area to be eerily quiet, and they see Admiral Rampart stepping out of a ship, supported by several TK series stormtroopers. The pragmatic Admiral continuously referred to Project War Mantle, and they soon discovered that these clone troopers were to be terminated and replaced by conscripted soldiers. Disguising themselves as one of the clone commandos, they spot one of the elite squad lagging slightly behind the main group, and Obi-Wan wrenched the comlink off of its mountings with the Force. Using it to discover that they had been alerted to disturbance below them, the duo tried to warn Clone Force 99, but they discovered that there was no signal in the tunnels, so they headed for Nala Se's private laboratory, where they find an eerie group of medical tubes. Obi-Wan suddenly sensed danger, and ordering Rex to move, the Jedi Master moved the tubes into the path of the Blaster 5 Elite squad before helping Rex to eliminate all of the troopers. Despite threatening to kill Crosshair if he did not defect from the Empire, the sharpshooter refused to move from his position, stating that this was his true identity and it could not be changed. Obi-Wan calmly placed Crosshair in a state of unconsciousness, and as Clone Force 99 arrived from their secret entrance, they lifted Crosshair into the closest medical bay, finding AZI-3 on their short journey. The medical droid arrived to scan the mind of the clone, but found that the control chip had been removed, and Obi-Wan tries to manipulate his mind with the Force. Rather unexpectedly, Crosshair started to hold his head in pain, as if he was programmed to resist the Force, and suddenly he fell loosely onto the bedding. The Empire corrupted Crosshair to death, and as they lamented the loss of one of their brothers, the voice of Admiral Rampart echoed through the complex, coldly informing the clones that their time was over. Feeling a rumbling all around them, the walls around the medical bay began to crack as the Empire began their bombardment of the facility. The clone troopers who had been patrolling the area had been coldly disregarded, and finding themselves crushed by their own home, Obi-Wan used the corpse of Crosshair as a shield for the clone troopers as they made their way back out to the ship. Making an educated guess that the underground passage was obstructed, Obi-Wan leads the clones out of the docking bay, where they had previously made their entry but he soon stopped in his tracks. An intimidating looking starship appeared through the dark clouds, and ordering the clones to run back to their ship, Rex and Obi-Wan brandished their weapons as the TK troopers, before stopping at the sight of Darth Vader. The Sith was still getting used to his heavy and restrictive armour, and moving from the ramp of his ship, he looked around him at the imminent fall of this once proud military complex, when he sensed the disturbance in the Force. Turning to where Obi-Wan and Rex were hiding, he marched purposely towards them, when he's knocked off his feet from shots above. The Havoc Marauder taken off in time, to stop the Sith from discovering his old master, and taking their chance to escape, Obi-Wan and Rex dive down into the water, before swimming back to their ship's hideout. Returning to Ord Mantell, their quest to discover Crosshair, had only led to death, destruction and the discovery that Obi-Wan was still alive, so the Jedi Master left the clones, to stop the Empire from tracking them down. But Obi-Wan refused to lose hope in the face of failure, and with Luke, he continued to scour the galaxy for any young Force sensitives, or survivors of Order 66 with the assistance of Bail Organa's secret intelligence, bringing them all to Dagobah. The Jedi Master was soon able to release the burden of Luke on Yoda, allowing him to help the Rebellion oppose the Empire, which usually manifested itself in minor raids on Imperial warehouses, or disturbing any gatherings. But Vader had other ideas, and offering vast sums of Imperial credits for the location of Obi-Wan, the Jedi Master soon found himself betrayed by an unexpected ally. Whilst Obi-Wan had been pursuing the last of the Jedi, Darth Vader become even more obsessed with finding his old master, since his failure on Kamino. 
with his inquisitors being frequently killed. The Sith is forced to make his own journey, and with the help of the Imperial Intelligence, he managed to find a secret rebel rendezvous point in the Outer Rim. In his TIE Advanced Shuttle, the Sith ordered his two neighbouring Imperial TIE Fighters to cut off any escape as he tackled the small rebel fleet. Using all of his piloting skills that had been perfected on Tatooine, Vader decimated the rebel starfighters and began the docking procedure for the Hammerhead class cruiser. Blocking all of the available escape routes, the Sith Lord frightened all of the rebel officers who dared to stand in his path until he saw his intended target, who was former clone captain Rex. Even a battle-hardened soldier like Rex was slightly shaken by the cold exterior of the Machine of Terror in front of him, and Vader told him that it was a shame that a man of his talents was wasted serving for the Alliance. As Vader ignited his blade, Rex prepared himself for imminent death, until he felt his mind being stretched and destroyed, as Vader used his dark side powers to extract the location of Obi-Wan from his former clone captain. Leaving him on the floor in pain, Vader showed what for his standards was mercy, by allowing his Imperial TIE Fighters to decimate the ship. Watching the Sith leave in his fading vision, Obi-Wan had been right, and what was once Anakin Skywalker had gone, but he had no time to dwell on it, as the ship began to shake from the incoming turret fire. Stumbling to his feet, Rex bounced from wall to wall, as he tried to make his way to the cockpit, when one of the ion sublight engines started to burn. Moving the corpses of the passengers and crew out of the way, he rapidly took control of the ship, and reprogramming the front-mounted laser cannons, he activated the secondary hyperdrive, where he was able to vanish to safety. Once out of the range of the Imperial fleet, Rex realised what he had done in betraying Obi-Wan, and rapidly transmitting a message to Bail Organa. The rebel leader used an emergency line of communication to start to move the Jedi from Dagobah. On the remote planet, Yoda had felt the disturbance in the Force from Vader's attack, but with no transportation, he had to wait for the help of the rebels. Sensing the approaching Vader, the former Grand Master escorted the Jedi younglings into the trees, whilst he laid out a trap for the Sith. Upon Vader's arrival, the towering machine of terror saw a trail of lightsabers on the floor, and following it through to the dark side cave, the Jedi escaped in a rebel-like cruiser, as the Sith faced an unusual challenge. Despite all of the Sith torture and training his master subjected him to, Vader struggled to conquer the visions of the cave, as those he had killed and those he had betrayed for the dark side spoke to him about what he had become. As he eventually stepped out from the virgins in the force, the apprentice is shocked to see his master, looking most displeased at Vader's failure. Ordering him to correct his mistake by hunting the Jedi to their graves, Vader masked his reluctance as he entered his shuttle again. Back in a rebel-like cruiser, the Jedi are relieved that they had managed to escape the clutches of the Sith, but Yoda knew that the Empire were relentless in their pursuit of their blood, and discussing what should be done with the other rebel leaders, they decide to try and trap the Sith again. Surrounding the Dagobah system with their ships, the rebels waited patiently for Vader to emerge, and as he left the planet, they began firing at his ship. The Sith are not expected such an attack, and beginning to spiral out of control, he quickly ordered for his fleet to arrive. Soon joined by his master, the rebels continued to fire the two Imperial shuttles, until they were both forced to land in one of the rebel cruisers. Awaiting their arrival were two battalions of rebel officers, supported by the remaining Jedi, apart from Yoda who was using his battle meditation to nullify the Imperial assault. Palpatine scowled at what was in front of him, and launching a widespread landing attack, it turned most of the Jedi into dust but from behind him, Vader impaled his lightsaber through the back of his master. The Jedi looked at the Sith in stunned silence, as elements of his circuitry started to crackle, sustained from his crash landing, and Vader fell to the floor. Obi-Wan had not been a failure as a master after all, and becoming a hero for the Rebel Alliance, he began to help the galaxy rebuild to its former glory. That is it for what if Obi-Wan never went into exile. If you enjoyed this what if, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, Click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.